This is Carla Hinton reporting for the Oklahoman and NewsOK.com. I'm here in the studio with Jeremy Huey. He is executive director of the American Lung Association in Oklahoma and Wendy Sparks of Oklahoma City. They are here to talk about the American Lung Association's Lung Force Initiative. Thanks so much for coming. It's good to be with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, Jeremy, what is the Lung Force uh, Initiative? Can you share some information about that? Sure, I'd love to. Uh, the Lung Force Initiative uh, is a national movement of the American Lung Association to bring attention to lung cancer, which is the number one cancer killer here in America. And so every state does it a little bit differently, but um, we have different elements that we're trying to communicate. Uh, the second week of May is turquoise takeover. Uh, so you'll see turquoise all over the state that's highlighting and bringing attention to lung cancer. Uh, of course, we do a walk in June. Uh, and then we have webinars. Uh, we have a reception in June. Okay. Um, lung Force uh, has a Lung Force Cancer Awareness Month is in November. But really just to let people know that uh, lung cancer is a big deal and uh, we want people to know about it. Interesting, interesting. How did Wendy get involved with the initiative, if you could talk for me? You bet. Well, um, Wendy's been involved with the American Lung Association uh, for several years now and actually was the Volunteer of the Year nationally oh, wow. uh, last year for the American Lung Association. So we're really glad to have her on our team. Okay. Um, the story, though, is that her sister uh, passed away from lung cancer, and so she uh, represents a large team uh, of people who loved and supported Nikki, her sister, <laughs> and have been involved for years raising money to help us find a cure for lung cancer. Okay, okay. Well, now I'll let you talk for yourself. Okay. Wendy, how, how did you get involved? What made you decide that you wanted to be part of this effort? Well, like Jeremy said, my sister passed away of lung cancer when she was 38 years old. And we had a friend that we met in the hospital that was her physical therapist that did the climb in 2013, right after Nikki passed away, okay. the Five for Air climb with the American Lung Association. Well, after she did that, she was like, we need to get a team together. We need to do this for Team Nikki. Mm -hmm. And I was really out of shape then, so I took a year and started getting in shape for the climb mm -hmm. and got the first year, got 25 of my closest friends and family to climb. Um, for us, and we ended up raising ten thousand okay. dollars that year. Okay, wow, wow. Okay, so what is the climb? You mentioned that. What did you climb? We climbed seventy flights of stairs. We okay. were in Leadership Square, wow. and we climbed the first tower, which is twenty floors up and twenty down, and then we ran across the lobby to the second tower and ran fifteen up and fifteen down. Okay, okay, and this uh, raising money for uh, right, okay. raising money for all lung diseases. Okay, okay, interesting, interesting. Okay, well, I know that you just went to Washington D.C. as part of the Lung Force project. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes, it was the first ever Lung Force Advocacy Day okay. at, at the Capitol. And so there was a representative from every state with the American Lung Association, so I represented Oklahoma. Okay. And we went to the House of Representatives and the Senate and spoke to our legislature about increasing the funding okay. um, above what the President has in his budget for the National Institute of Health. Okay. So if that budget raises, then obviously the cancer budget raises and the lung cancer budget raises. So we just went around and I talked to the senators um, and told them a little bit about Nikki and why we were there. Okay, okay. And you mentioned to me that you were uh, really pleased to see there were uh, survivors there or people yes. who are, are mm -hmm. battling uh, lung cancer now. Tell me a little bit about that. I haven't seen a lot of survivors okay. and um, especially past, you know, two years. Okay. So there were several people that were representatives of their state that were okay. four years plus surviving because of these new targeted drugs. They'd get tested for a certain mutation and these drugs work and they help keep it stable. Mm -hmm. And so the more funding we have, the more drugs they create, the more people are stable. Okay. Good, good, good. Okay, can you talk a little bit about your uh, time here in downtown Oklahoma City just this past uh, Saturday? You, that, that, that was yes. the climb. Mm -hmm. Tell me about <laughs> that. that. Was a climb. You had your team. Um, I had a team. I had, I believe I ended up with 55 people on okay. Team Nikki. Wow. Okay. And we go and we climb the stairs and we cheer each other on and we raise money. That's what we do. That's kind of what I bring to the board okay. um, of the American Lung Association here in Oklahoma. I'm not. I'm a doctor or a nurse or I don't have any clinical experience, but I have friends and family and we have a passion for this 
okay. um, cause. So we we ran stairs and we um, were first in fundraising this year. We raised sixteen thousand mm -hmm. oh, wow. dollars, and um, we had several people that raised over a thousand dollars. And that was an, that's another thing that touches me is so many people that I know that really are passionate about this just because of Nikki's story okay. um, that helped help me raise money. It's not just not me. Okay. Good, good. Well, tell me, you all, one of you, or, or maybe both of you, can talk a little bit about just the, the idea of raising awareness, how critical that is right now. Well, raising awareness is really our top priority. Um, lung cancer hides itself in your lungs. Your lungs have this incredible ability to function even with severe disease, whether it be asthma, which right. is the number one reason kids miss school, right. uh, COPD, emphysema, hmm. but lung cancer. And so uh, I've been in some uh, cancer hospitals where they're showing how they're treating it, right. and you can have lung cancer, and your lungs are fully functioning, hmm. and you don't know. Okay. So if the symptoms of lung cancer reveal themselves in you, most likely you're beyond stage four lung cancer, which means you have less than a 5% chance of surviving. Okay. So we need to let people know that there's certain criteria that uh, if they're flagged in your life, you're a possible risk for lung cancer, and okay. we need to not wait for those symptoms to reveal themselves. Okay, okay, good. And I guess you know that from personal experience with you. Well, and that was one thing with Nikki, she had no symptoms. Okay. She found out she had lung cancer from a flu, because she did a, oh, wow. A heart scan. Okay. Um, she just passed by the Oklahoma Heart Hospital has um, advertisements on the highway for fifty dollar heart scans, mm. and so she was always really proactive in her health, and so sure. she went to do a fifty dollar heart scan, and they let her know that they had seen tumors in her lungs, and so it just kind of escalated from that point. And from the moment she was diagnosed until she passed away, she never had any symptoms of lung cancer. She never had a cough, she never coughed up blood, her oxygen levels were never were never low. Okay. Um, so that's the scary part. Okay, okay, good. Well, thank you for coming in today to raise awareness. Mm -hmm. I hope that people who view this will this will kind of uh, trigger some, some awareness there. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. This is Carla Hinton reporting for The Oklahoman and NewsOK.com. Read more on this topic in The Oklahoman.